Um, the last one that we have for today um, is Dr. Paul C. Pribernau, who is the president of the university uh, that I uh, work at, Augsburg University. Um, he is going to hold a presentation on hospitality is not enough, e uh, equity and inclusion in higher education. Um, so he, his hope is obviously to share part of the story um, of Augsburg and uh, what we are doing um, he will most likely mention this, but I just want to say it, that we actually now have the minority group be the majority group at Augsburg, which has been a huge uh, goal for Dr. Pribernau, is to make sure that our institution is open to anyone who wants an education. Um, so he will speak to that. Good afternoon. I'm Paul Pribinow, the president of Augsburg University in Minneapolis uh, in the United States. And uh, it's my great privilege to be coming to you even in this virtual way to share some perspectives on the theme of your important conference today on um, issues of inclusion and equity, and especially of migration. Um, I have been the president of Augsburg for the past uh, 15 and a half years, and it's been my great pleasure uh, to be a part of a community that has in fact embraced its commitments to serving our immigrant neighbors. Um, and so today I'm going to share my screen with you so that I can um, tell you a little bit about Augsburg and about um, the kind of basis for our commitment, but also some uh, specific examples of ways in which we are working with our immigrant neighbors. I've entitled my uh, presentation today, Hospitality is Not Enough, because in fact, one of the things that we've really learned at Augsburg is the, uh, is the need to go beyond simply welcoming people kind of into our community. We have to also have to think about you know, our work, our responsibility as an institution, both as individuals as well as as a community um, in fighting for equity and inclusion, um, both in higher education and in the kind of broader, broader society. Just a quick a few words about Augsburg. If you don't know, we were founded uh, actually by um, uh, Norwegians who came to the United States uh, in the uh, mid to late 19th century. Um, we have been 150 years in the neighborhood called Cedar Riverside, which is actually in the midst of, uh, of Minneapolis. And uh, we've lived alongside of our neighbors for that 150 years. And uh, in many ways, um, Throughout that 150 years, often our neighbors have been immigrants from different parts of the world, as we were immigrants ourselves when we were first founded, um, to now where we are surrounded by immigrants from Somalia, from Ethiopia, from Korea, from Vietnam. And so there's kind of an immigrant sensibility as part of our life as a community. We were founded by Norwegians who also happen to be Lutheran Christians, uh, and they picked as their early motto of Augsburg, uh, a very familiar verse from the Gospel of John, um, which says, uh, and the word became flesh. Um, and so we continue to hold that um, claim as both a theological claim, but also as a practical claim, that is, we are the word made flesh uh, in the world now. And so how are we living out that um, gospel claim uh, in the ways in which we live as a community with our neighbors? Um, we also um, have a very strong commitment to what it means to settle into a neighborhood and to actually uh, make it better. Um, and we have a vocational statement as an institution that says we believe we are called to serve our neighbor. So a very important part of our overall commitment, both to our academic work as an institution, but also to our uh, community engagement. Uh, and then finally, uh, we really see our neighborhood um, as um, a classroom for democratic engagement. So in fact, as we are working with our immigrant neighbors, uh, we are actually uh, figuring out how to live together, how to, how to uh, navigate life day in and day out alongside of each other, even with our very different life experiences, our different backgrounds, our different religions, um, all of that uh, that comes into the mix, if you will, as we try to think about how we can um, really equip our students for a democratic engagement in their lives uh, once they graduate from Augsburg. Uh, just a, a quick word, Augsburg is about um, 3,200 students, both undergraduate students in the US system, uh, uh, those who are traditional college age, uh, 18 to 22. Uh, we also have uh, some adult programs for uh, coming back and finishing a, an undergraduate degree. And then we have uh, 11 different graduate programs now across many different disciplines of uh, social work, nursing, education, uh, business, uh, leadership, uh, fine arts degrees and the like. So a very uh, interesting mix of academic programs um, and a very uh, diverse student body that at this point um, 
the undergraduate level, we are more than 60% students who come from communities of color. So we've uh, really been transformed over the past 12 or 15 years. And so in many ways, that change in our demographic has uh, challenged us to think about our commitment to equity and inclusion in even more concrete ways. As I mentioned, uh, 150 years, uh, just uh, a couple of years ago, we celebrated our sesquicentennial, our 150th anniversary. It was a tough year to do that because we uh, had to kind of curtail it in the midst of the pandemic, but it was a, a grand celebration of all that uh, Augsburg stands for. And it's all grounded in our mission, which says that we educate students to be informed citizens, thoughtful stewards, critical thinkers, and responsible leaders. And we also uh, really claim the work of diversity as part of our community. And then we, um, um, also have commitments to excellence in uh, liberal arts, professional studies, that we continue to be guided by the faith and values of the Lutheran Christian Church, and we are shaped by our urban and uh, global settings. We actually have uh, campus sites around the world in uh, Latin America, uh, in uh, South of Africa, uh, as well as um, in Mexico. And so it's um, a very important part of our life to be shaped by those places. I want to say just a quick word about what grounds our commitment uh, to low equity and to inclusion and to serving our neighbors. Um, and it starts with our faith commitment. Um, as a Lutheran Christian institution, um, uh, it really compels us, uh, we believe, to both hospitality and justice, to, to loving our neighbor. Um, and we, we live that out in many ways. Certainly, we live it out uh, in uh, lifting up our Lutheran Christian faith. But at the same time, we have now become this incredibly diverse, uh, uh, pluralistic uh, faith community community in many ways, students coming from many different faith traditions. And so uh, even though we are grounded in a particular commitment, uh, we also believe that that opens us up to the experiences of others, um, not necessarily um, because we would ever hope to convert people, but we actually believe that in fact, when we come alongside individuals from different faith traditions, we strengthen our own faith. And so uh, in particular with our Somali Muslim neighbors, that has been a very important dynamic here over the past 15 years. We also uh, have made a commitment to that in many ways. So we have a college chaplain um, who, is, who is Muslim, um, to serve our Muslim students alongside of our Lutheran Christian pastors. Uh, and so important part of the kind of spiritual life of our community. We also ground this equity commitment in our academic mission, and in particular in our commitment to the liberal arts, which uh, from our perspective demand of us this openness to kind of ever wider set of perspectives. And so we think about this um, um, in the classroom, we think about it um, in the, on the stage, we think about it in athletics, we think about it uh, in community engagement and all the different ways in which our students are learning from different angles, different perspectives um, about the kind of uh, most pressing issues uh, in our world today. And so uh, certainly um, equity, inclusion, immigrant uh, you know, service to immigrants is an important uh, issue that we face. And so how do we bring the perspectives of our different disciplines, our different life experiences to bear on these questions? And so we see this really as central to what it means to be a liberal arts university and to have that as our primary academic mission. And then finally, we also ground this equity commitment in our uh, belief in democracy. That is that we believe that a democracy actually, actually shaped to uh, travel uh, the road, if you will, together um, and to do that with folks who don't necessarily share all of, of our same experiences and gifts. So, so that democratic commitment means that in fact our work uh, for equity and inclusion is about making sure that everyone who is on that road of democracy with us um, has the same opportunities, the same um, you know, uh, responsibilities as well. Um, and so it's a, a central part of our work as a university both on campus and in the broader, broader community. And we live that out in a whole variety of ways. We, we do a lot of research and writing kind of on this question. Um, and it's, it's also gets played out in our openness and our constant kind of vigilance about what's going on in the demographics of the world. So when you think about this work around migration and serving immigrants, uh, they are an important part of what's happened in our state of Minnesota in terms of, um, of, of, of the, our being a resettlement location for them. Um, and so what that means is they come into a community, but yet we still have, as you note here, uh, racial gaps. We still have, um, you know, uh, you know, despite this uh, new Americans that have come to our community, we're still struggling with what it means to actually welcome them, but then also help them to be successful. So those are some of the central questions that we take quite seriously as we do our work, as we do our work uh, with our immigrant neighbors. So I'm gonna provide, uh, two case studies of our work with immigrant communities. The first is um, walking alongside our Somali neighbors uh, in the Cedar Riverside neighborhood. Um, so in our neighborhood, we have the largest population of Somali immigrants um, 
um, at this point, Somali Americans, they started to come to uh, Minneapolis back in the early 1990s. Um, and so now we are in, really in a second generation of those. So many of their children are now actually coming to Augsburg, but they're also still our neighbors. So uh, the population of Somalis in the uh, Minneapolis-St. Paul region is actually the largest population of Somalis outside of the city of Mogadishu. So it's a, just a daily part of our life to walk alongside our Somali neighbors. And then I also want to uh, offer some thoughts on, on our work with um, with a, a population of undocumented students. These are students primarily from Latin America, Mexico, who have come to Minnesota with their families, um, but they're undocumented. They're, they're not officially citizens of the United States, and they're uh, a growing population, but they're, it's a significant uh, kind of political issue in the United States, and it's one that we've leaned into as a university um, when we've done our work uh, with these students, and it's uh, become an important part of our uh, commitment as an institution to serve these students and to help uh, equip them for success uh, in the American economy. So let me start with our Somali neighbors. Uh, so in many ways, this uh, is about uh, just believing that, in fact, we've got to come to the table together. So we have something called the Cedar Riverside Partnership, which is made up of uh, organizational leaders and uh, citizens from the community that come together uh, regularly to think about how we can make our neighborhood safer, how we can make it uh, you know, more economically viable, how we can meet the needs of youth, for example, uh, who are a particularly uh, growing population. And so it starts with this notion that we're actually in this together. We're, we're about um, walking alongside of each other in this neighborhood and making it a, a safer and stronger place for all of us. Um, but it's also about student success. So for us, we're, we're a university. We want uh, students to come to us, get a great education. So we also are involved in a whole variety of efforts that are actually creating pipelines, if you will, for our immigrant neighbors to come maybe to Augsburg, but perhaps to another university. But that commitment reaching back into middle and high school, uh, so back to um, 12 to 18 year olds, um, with something like um, our Minnesota Urban Debate Program, which uh, specifically our Somali Debate Initiative, which uh, teaches the, the uh, tactics of debate uh, to students while they're still, um, before they get to college. Um, and we know, in fact, have lots of evidence that that those skills that they learn in a debate program actually prepare them to go and to be successful uh, in college. So just a, one example of how we're uh, really reaching back uh, before they actually get to, to university to create those pathways for success. We are also thinking then about um, what can we do uh, in programs that we run um, to actually put teachers back in schools who actually look like the immigrants that they are teaching. And that has been a huge challenge. There's a huge gap uh, in Minnesota and actually across the United States in teachers of color. So we have actually developed a program specifically to educate the future teachers who are East African. Um, and so a growing number of, of these of, uh, Somalis and others are coming to us for the sake of getting a teacher's license so that they can go back into the schools and uh, teach uh, these immigrant students that are um, a, a growing population. And so one of the very specific initiatives, again, that we're undertaking to serve uh, our immigrant neighbors. Um, we also have very much focus on youth work in the neighborhood. Uh, we know that the, uh, the youth, the Somali youth, uh, especially uh, young men, have had real challenges with uh, unemployment. Um, we know that there's always the challenges of gangs that uh, you know, they may join if they're not being uh, kind of engaged in other ways. And so we've been working uh, with both boys and girls. And this particular um, example is of a group of Somali girls who came forward and wanted to uh, learn how to do a business. And so they partnered with our business program, our business faculty and students, formed a business plan, ultimately um, were able to uh, lease space right near our campus, and they opened something called the Sisterhood Boutique, which is a, um, a secondhand uh, clothing store, which uh, they received donations, and then they um, they learned how to run the business, they learned about fashion, they learned about uh, how to, uh, how to, all the ins and outs of what it means, and then ultimately, um, uh, if they intern um, at this uh, boutique, we offer them scholarships to come uh, to Augsburg to pursue their further education. So just another way that we're creating that sense of connection. Um, then I wanna say a, a, just a little bit about the, our work with undocumented and doc, what DACA, which is the program specifically that President Obama um, established that actually gave undocumented students <clears throat> a status that allowed them 
uh, to uh, to work and to be able to uh, go to school. And so this is a program that has gone through um, a lot of changes. And I'm just going to give you a quick sense of the timeline on this. So uh, early on, uh, just shortly after I became president at Augsburg, uh, we knew there were undocumented students. In fact, they were starting to come to us, but of course they couldn't receive any kind of aid outside of what we could offer them. And so uh, we had to make a commitment, and we did, um, that, that, that we believed that these students, um, with their kind of great ability, that in fact they were going to be important to our the economic prosperity of our country going forward. Uh, and so we made a commitment to uh, to fund them, to bring them to campus. Um, and so for several years, uh, we had uh, uh, wonderful students like the young man uh, featured here, uh, Juve Meza, who uh, actually became the student government president while he was a student at Augsburg. Um, and ultimately, this started also then uh, as we were thinking about this commitment to what it meant to, to say as an institution that we were committed um, to um, students, no matter their national or ethnic origin. So you see their official action taken by our Board of Regents uh, to support those students. And uh, Uve has gone on to law school. And so we start to see examples of these undocumented students who came in a very difficult situation and ultimately were successful at Augsburg and are now doing remarkable things in the world. As we move forward then, um, again, DACA was uh, then created in 2012. It, uh, there is the official name, the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, which, which allowed them some relief from deportation. Um, in our state, um, the state government in Minnesota uh, passed what was called the Minnesota Dream Act, which actually allowed us to um, make eligible our undocumented students for some state support, state tuition support, which meant that they, um, more of them were able to come to Augsburg, and we had a growing number of these students coming to us. Um, and then it started to become something which, uh, you know, many organizations were formed to support these students, both while they were still um, in high school and then moving on to higher education. So this uh, organization, United We Dream, uh, was founded and just trying to think through all of the barriers that these students uh, potentially faced. And so we were able to um, uh, be a part of that effort um, and to, in some ways, uh, strengthen each other's work. Um, but then, of course, what happened in 2016 uh, in the election of uh, Donald Trump uh, put a lot of these uh, efforts that had gone on there for uh, seven or eight years really in jeopardy. And so um, many of us had to kind of be very careful to keep our students safe because there was the threat that somehow the, the government might come and find them and, de and deport them. Um, we were trying to help them to be successful even as we knew that they were uh, under great stress and anxiety because of the situation. We actually had a something called a campus climate action team um, that was just constantly scanning for any of these kind of challenges. Um, and we were very active both at the state and federal levels and kind of advocating for policy changes. Um, um, as you may know, uh, President Trump repealed or attempted to repeal DACA in 2017. There were challenges that went back and forth over the entire, uh, entirety of his term as president. And then uh, the good news that came on January 20th uh, on uh, President Biden's first day in office when he issued an executive order that reinstated the DACA program. And I would just, uh, all of this is kind of in the weeds, if you will, about uh, American politics. But it is important to say that when you have a commitment to serving immigrants, no matter where you are, you are always going to be in a particular political social context that in fact could affect your uh, ability to do what you really want to do, what you really think is important to do as an institution. When I stand at our commencement ceremonies and look at the students who come across the stage, just some picture here, um, this is why we do this work, because we believe that these remarkable students who come, again, with uh, such diverse life experiences, backgrounds as refugees, as immigrants, um, as students uh, who have just um, faced huge barriers and obstacles, but to be able to come to Augsburg, to know that we have these programs in place that will support them, help them to be successful, and then to know that as they walk across that stage, they have a door that's been opened for them that allows them to go forward into the world and do remarkable things, and they are doing remarkable things. Um, this also uh, shows you how we think about that on the other end, that is as students arrive, this, is, this was the uh, traditional class uh, photo that we take when our students arrive in this fall for to begin their academic life at Augsburg. And so this was the class of 2026, the one that arrived just a couple of months ago. And you can see actually in the faces in this picture, just how diverse our student body is and what a privilege it is to have such a diverse community and one that's so deeply committed to equity and inclusion in so many ways. I want to say just a quick word uh, about a couple other initiatives then that uh, are 
campus-based ways that we're supporting our students. So uh, this program called the Sankofa Circle Fellowship was actually founded this year by uh, Joanne Reek there in the lower left, uh, who is our Vice President for Equity and Inclusion. And she has uh, colleagues who are working with her and Chris and Kate, and they've actually developed a mentor and scholarship program for our African and African-American students, uh, which includes mentoring. Um, so there are uh, opportunities for them to meet with uh, alumni of color, other leaders from the community, um, but this entire program has been um, designed to help our students also to understand some of the Pan-African principles that can guide their life. And so in addition to financial support, to mentoring, they're also learning um, uh, much more about their own history um, and much more about uh, what difference that history can make and those principles can make for their success in the world. So we're very proud of this program. It's uh, uh, generating a lot of interest among our students, but it's also uh, bringing us a lot of philanthropic support from alumni and friends who care deeply about our work. And so I just give this as an example of where we're trying to lean into our commitments to equity and inclusion, um, not just as rhetoric, but actually in very concrete ways that we're attempting to serve our students and our community. This is a, a picture. I love showing this picture to our uh, Norwegian friends because this is a new building that was, uh, was opened at Augsburg in 2018. It's called the Hagfors Center for Science, Business, and Religion. And I always like to point out that the colors that you see um, uh, near the windows, the, the, the oranges and yellows and, and reds, were actually all uh, picked because we took a picture of the banks of a fjord in Norway um, and found the colors that were in those banks and then brought those colors in so that we could actually honor our heritage as an institution founded by Norwegians um, and be reminded every day of how important that uh, heritage is even as we've become a place of, of deep diversity, a place that's committed in so many ways to equity and inclusion, we know uh, that we continue to share that work uh, with our Norwegian colleagues, and we're so proud uh, to be a part of that effort. So I know this wasn't the, perhaps the, the easiest way to, uh, to engage, and I'm sorry that I'm not able to be with you in order to uh, you know, engage in conversation, but I hope uh, this gives you some some sense, some uh, flavor, if you will, of uh, how one particular institution, one that has uh, deep roots in its uh, Norwegian and Lutheran Christian heritage actually is um, attempting to do um, important work in commitment to equity, inclusion, and service to our immigrant neighbors on a day-to-day -day basis. So thank you so much for this opportunity, and uh, I hope uh, we might have a chance in future years to come together uh, in person and to, uh, and to share these important work. So thank you to Paul. Um, one of the things I just want to say about Paul that um, amazes me, um, and he didn't share this, but um, during commencement, when people come up and grab their diplomas, uh, very commonly, uh, especially from U Norway or uh, Europe, we shake hands, right? So the student come up, they grab the, the diploma, and then we shake hands. Uh, and Paul um, realized that there were a few students that didn't come to commencement because they were women from Islamic background and said, I can't touch you. And so Paul decided, well, I can change because I want you up on that stage. So what he did was saying to all the students, you come up, I'm not going to necessarily touch you, I will give you the diploma and I'm just going to say congratulations. And I just feel like that is such a beautiful way of showing that I respect you. I can still congratulate you without needing to show my um, cultural sort of um, uh, way of doing things. Um, and I just want to name that because I just think that is such a beautiful um, story um, and gives you a perspective really on who Paul Pribunau is in our community at Augsburg. Um, another thing I just want to say, too, is that um, the acknowledgement of land is something that's big at Augsburg. So um, in Minneapolis, St. Paul, we have two rivers. We have the Mississippi River and we have the um, Minnesota River, and they meet. And in the Dakota language, that's called Bedote. And the Dakota people think that they originated from that place uh, out of the mud and it's a beautiful place. You should, you should really Google it. It's called Bedote. I think that when two rivers meet, it's called Bedote. No matter where in the world, 
it happens. Uh, but it's a very, very uh, beautiful place um, in our region. Um, and so whenever we have commencement, whenever we have meetings, this is the way that I open up our um, orientation for international students, is to read out the acknowledgement of whose land we're actually standing on. Um, and this little, it's really just a paragraph, but it's created by an indigenous um, student on campus.